So hi, Micro Hunter here again, and today I brought a few things along that you probably have not seen yet because they are astronomy related. Yes, I know it's a microscopy channel. I will st uh, stay true to this channel, of course. Um, and today I simply want to do the following. I want to compare amateur astronomy and amateur microscopy because I've been involved in both. Of course, uh, you know me as a, uh, a YouTuber, which is dedicated uh, to microscopy mostly, but something that you might not know that uh, many years ago, I was quite a bit involved in astronomy as well. And then I decided later to switch over to microscopy. And I simply want to show you a couple of the things here, actually two things here, my telescope and a little contraption over here. And uh, then I would like to compare those two hobbies uh, because yeah, there are a couple of thoughts that I have and I'd like to also hear your opinions on those. Well, it was almost around 30 years ago uh, when I bought uh, this uh, telescope here. It's a refractor, so you see, yeah, there is a lens. It's not a mirror telescope, but there is, of course, uh, an objective in here. Eyepiece, uh, you know those things here. This is the focus. I attached this uh, piece of metal here. It's from, in, uh, from a computer, um, so that focusing is easier. Unfortunately, I don't know uh, where the small telescope uh, is right now. I have to check where I put it. Uh, but um, I bought this uh, telescope um, yeah, quite a few years ago. Um, and I imported it from the United States um, because I specifically wanted to have this and I'm living in Europe right now so I remember how to pay quite a bit of import tax uh, for this telescope and uh, this is, has been my main telescope that I've been using uh, to do all sorts of uh, observations. Yeah, so what can you see of course? Uh, the planets, of course, uh, Jupiter, the four moons of Jupiter, very nicely visible. Saturn, the ring of Saturn can be seen. Um, if, you, uh, if the conditions are good, you can also see uh, the cloud formations of Jupiter a little bit. Uh, not very well, but a little bit as well. And uh, um, I've also been doing a lot of solar project projections using this telescope. Uh, you're not allowed to look through it, of course. But uh, when you actually have the sun shining in here, then um, it projects an image on the ceiling of my room. And then you can see the sun spots. And if you want to observe the sun directly, um, you have to use some astron um, astronomical filter film. So that's an astronomical film, um, yeah, solar, yeah, for for watching the sun. And I made it myself and you put it over here. Um, and uh, then you can also observe the sun directly and it's safe. Uh, uh, by the way, you're not allowed to, or you should definitely not um, use any foil, uh, but you have to use uh, the astrono astronomical ones. Yeah, so I've been actually quite a bit uh, involved here. This is also quite an interesting one um, to reduce the brightness. It's so bright that even for the moon, it's too bright that you can actually, yeah, it's like um, stopping down the telescope a little bit. So essentially I've been using this uh, quite a lot as I already mentioned and uh, um, one of the things that um, I like about this um, and I still like about it is, is it's very compact and portable. Yeah, and uh, one of the things that uh, when I was a beginner in, in astronomy, one of the first things that I found out is, is that uh, many people think that uh, the point of a telescope is, is to magnify a lot. The same idea in, in microscopy. People think high magnification is everything. But in reality, the whole point of a telescope is actually to gather light. And the larger the aperture here, uh, the more light it's able to gather and the, the fainter the stars are that you're able to see. Uh, magnification is uh, also possible, of course, you can go up with the magnification because the resolution that goes up, the larger the diameter here. Okay, everything else being equal, of course. Yeah? The optics have to be, of course, perfect and then are very good. And then the larger the aperture here, the better the resolution. But ultimately, um, yeah, high magnification is not necessarily always that what you need, uh, but light gathering ability. And uh, surprise, surprise, <laughs> when you buy a telescope, very often they also advertise very high magnifications, just like with microscopes, as if uh, magnification is, is the most important thing, which of course it is not. Yeah, um, yeah at that time, um, I've uh, also started to subscribe uh, to a magazine. Yeah, this one, for example, is 16 years old, this edition here, Sky and Telescope. This was my favorite one. Uh, one. There were several, but um, I used to subscribe to that. And uh, a year on Mars, can you believe this? This is about a year of uh, Spirit and Opportunity rovers. This is, wow, <laughs> time passes and now they're actually thinking about starting a small helicopter. I think just these days they're going to start a small, the first small Mars helicopter. Um, so how time has passed. Um, but uh, essentially there were a lot of um, yeah astronomy magazines around, uh, something that we're kind of missing a little bit in microscopy. 
Um, so of course, lots of advertisements in here, uh, which I liked to observe. So there's a big, pretty big market as well. Um, and uh, yeah, all the ads, yeah. lots of interesting high quality articles, yeah. ads again. So the ads were actually an important part um, of, uh, of a magazine here. Um, and yeah, so this basically gave uh, an amateur or still gives an amateur who's interested in um, astronomy yeah, quite a bit of uh, a lot of resources actually to, to engage in the hobby. Yeah. So um, yeah, I'm not finished yet. Uh, then I'll talk about microscopes and microscopy. And I don't know, you might not know what this is. This is actually quite a fascinating thing here. It says made in West Germany here. This was, uh, I bought this before the reunification of Germany, I think, or at least this one was made. Uh, the purpose of this here is, um, is, is to compensate for the Earth's rotation while you're taking a long time exposure. So what you have to do is, is you have to line this up with the North Star, with the Polar Star. You have to wind it up. Maybe you can also even hear the ticking sound. It, there's a clockwork in here. And um, it will basically make sure that the camera is always pointed at, this, at, at the same position on the sky. Uh, and uh, one thing that um, I don't have here is, is uh, here I do still have the telescope. There's a small plastic telescope connected here as well so that you actually can align it properly with the polar star. Um, and the angle here um, has to be adjusted to your geographic position. And I made the base here on, of wood. I made it myself and you can see that I even added this here um, to make sure that when it's mounted on a tripod, yeah, that it's absolutely that it's absolutely horizontal. So, and I've been taking a lot of uh, long-term uh, camera uh, exposures uh, with that. At that time, I still used, of course, uh, analog film, black-white film with a high resolution, and I developed it myself as well. Um, yeah, um, I've not been using this now for quite a bit of time, and the reason is 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 because uh, it's become obsolete. Because these days, the digital cameras uh, are so good that you can actually uh, simply put it up stationary then you take uh, an exposure for a couple of seconds only so that the earth's rotation doesn't really have a large influence and uh, you repeat this and then you can actually combine several images on the computer uh, together into a, yeah, a final image um, so it's uh, actually you also have you're kind of compensating the earth's rotation this way by simply taking separate pictures and then combining them. Yeah, but still this is a pretty good, uh, pretty good, was a pretty good device. I used it quite often to, to actually take pictures, but you have to align it really properly. Otherwise uh, the Earth's rotation is still gonna uh, play an effect. So that is basically, um, yeah, my astronomy background. Um, yeah, so, um, and now I wanna go back uh, to microscopy a little bit and talk about those two hobbies. Um, because I've been involved in both, <laughs> as, as you now uh, already know. Um, and I want to talk a little bit specifically about the problem of microscopy. There is, a, I think microscopy has a, I don't know how to put this really, um, has, a, has an image problem. I actually, I claim, claim it, to, that it has one. You have to see the following interesting par paradox. Um, Telescopes um, are large, uh, you need a, um, it, it's got to be dark, the weather's got to be nice, otherwise you're not able to see the stars. Um, and uh, sometimes you need a car to transport, especially a large uh, so-called Dobson telescope with a larger mir mirror, you, they're, yeah, they're not, they cannot be carried around so easily. Um, so um, if you want to do um, amateur astronomy, it can be that um, it's a little bit elaborate, the hobby, um, because yeah, you have to do a little bit of timing. Uh, is the weather fine? And then it's got to be sufficiently dark. At the place where I live during summertime, um, it starts to become dark at around 10 o'clock in, in the evening or 10.30. Um, 11 o'clock, it's getting dark. I'm living next to a city, so there's light pollution, so it's not, never going to be completely dark. There are a whole bunch of problems, really. The weather might not always uh, be nice. It might be cold. You've got to dress up warm. You're going to be tired in the evening after a day's work. Um, so I think that uh, if you want to do astronomy as a hobby, yeah, the overhead, the so-called the overhead is, is can be quite large. In microscopes, all you do is you go home, you switch on the microscope and you look at whatever you want to look at. And if you have a jar of old water standing on your table, you simply take a drop of that and put it under the microscope. Or you'd simply take a drop of your own blood and put it under the microscope and you can see the cells and, and have made videos on this. So it's actually, I think a microscopy is, is much easier to, to actually, uh, to to do the hobby because it's it's faster, yeah? less complicated in that sense. Um, and uh, also, uh, I think uh, many more people are probably um, exposed on an everyday basis to microscopes. I mean, in schools, many schools have microscopes. Not so many schools have telescopes. Um, and in the biology lab, it's not nothing unusual for every student to actually use a microscope. 
Um, so the exposure is there. Um, also in many forensics uh, films and I don't know if you have um, films in, 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 on television or on YouTube and, and, and so on. Uh, microscopes are, have a presence, right? The police always uses microscopes to find some kind of a, uh, to solve a mystery. But for whatever reason, microscopy is not as popular as a hobby. Um, and also the online resources that you're able to find are not quite as, 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 as abundant as those for astronomy. Just do a search, amateur astronomy and amateur microscopy. Put it to a search and you're going to see there is a huge difference. Um, and, yeah, and amateur biology is also not, very, <laughs> not a very popular term. But amateur astronomy, there are plenty of resources available. And I was kind of wondering why is that? And, and I have a hypothesis here and I just want to hear your opinion. And my hypothesis is, is that microscopy is not always positively connotated. Microscopy is negatively connotated. What do I mean? When people think about astronomy and stars, what do they think of? They think about the mysteries of space, space travel, going to Mars, um, all of the rocket launches uh, that we see right now on television, on videos and so on. Yeah, um, so there is some kind of yeah, exploration. Yeah, it's, it's something, it's positive, right? Um, yeah. It's expanding your horizons, it's expanding your mind, and, and it uh, shows how human civilization is now going into, into space. And then you've got all of the science fiction movies um, and uh, space travel. It's kind of interesting, fun, exciting. What do people think of when they hear, hear my, microscopes? In many cases, not in all cases, but in many cases. What do they think of? Diseases, bacteria, viruses, COVID. You won't believe how many questions I get um, um, on my other YouTube channel. Well, can I put the, co the coronavirus under the microscope? It's not possible because they're too small, uh, but that's what people are interested in. Um, bacteria, something disgusting a little bit. One of my most popular videos in this on my other channel is, is where I put an infection, some pus under the microscope. Yeah? And, and people want to see this. It's, yeah? And um, so I think it, it, it's not really always uh, positively connotated, but uh, essentially sometimes a little bit cause of fear. And when I put a water sample under the microscope, some, some people in the comments are saying, well, I'm not going to go swim in a lake anymore because if there's so many microorganisms in there, right? And they feel disgusted by that. And this can be, I think, uh, off-putting a little bit. Um, and um, I think this might be one of the reasons, it's a hypothesis, I admit, that might be one of the reasons why microscopy is maybe, maybe is not quite seen as something always very positive. But it's, yeah, it's, it's disease, it's medicine, it's going to doctors. Yeah, it's associated with crimes, right? That's why you have to do forensics. The police does forensics using, using microscopes. So it, it's not really the scientific exploration and nature observation and, 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 and the interest of, of getting connected to your environment and to nature, which is in the central focus, but rather, yeah, those microorganisms, are they going to attack me? Um, are they after me? Yeah. Oh my gosh, uh, I've got bacteria growing in my mouth. <gasps> yeah. Um, and, and you hear the same thing, um, even in this other video that I made where people, uh, they found uh, textile fibers uh, on their face mask. Uh, dust that you find everywhere. People were worried that these are worms. Oh my gosh, uh, they are worms on my face mask. I tried to debunk that. Um, several people didn't even believe me. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I used a microscope myself to check and they're really moving and there must be worms, right? Um, Self-diagnosis. Uh, people uh, writing comments where they say, okay, I want to buy a microscope to check my blood to see if I have a certain infection. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. I already made videos on that, but it doesn't work like this. Yeah. But these are the associations that people have. And, and um, I think uh, we as, a, as, a, as amateur microscopists, we somehow have to work together, I don't know how, uh, to, to kind of break this a little bit and, and, and to make sure that microscopy is seen as something, something, something positive, really. Yeah. I personally think that, uh, it's my personal view, I think that uh, if their parents or grandparents who wants to get their kids interested in the sciences, I think that the microscopes are, I'm not saying better, but I would say an easier way to actually make uh, scientific explorations compared to telescopes, simply because they're, I would say, in many cases, easier to handle, right? Um, and there is more to see in the sense that, uh, indeed, you see movement of paramecia moving around, you see the chloroplasts of plants, uh, all sorts of things. Um, you can see small little crustaceans from a water sample, big, and you see a heartbeat. So it's kind of interesting and fun, and there's action going on. Um, when you put uh, a, a telescope uh, into the sky, um, 
I mean, I was super excited that I was able to see a small little dot that I was not able to see yesterday because the viewing conditions improved. So what I've been doing is, I've, am I able to see this star that I was not able to see yesterday? And then compared to the star charts and I found out, ah, that's the star and I was able to see that and I was so happy, right? Uh, but ultimately, you're just seeing, seeing dots of light, right? Um, and, and, not, uh, um, and not really um, yeah, as much action as a moving white blood cell, right? Uh, like I made a video of that. Um, so uh, this is basically something I just wanted to share with you um, and as, as well that, uh, that I think uh, the, pos the positive aspects of, of, of microscopy, that is something that maybe we as a microscopy community can, can also work on together to, to promote those positive aspects. Um, um, but I have to tell you, when the night sky is clear, I still take out my telescope and I watch the moon and I watch yeah, a whole bunch of, of um, yeah, eclipses uh, when they happen. Yeah, and I did use also my regular cameras to take pictures uh, a couple of years ago of the Venus uh, basically going on front of the sun. Yeah, it's, uh, and also I was able to see the circle, the Mercury transit many years ago where the planet Mercury was seen going across the sun. I love astronomy a lot. It's, it's really, it's one of those, it's also nature observation. So in that sense, in that sense, um, um, yeah, I feel connected to, uh, to science and to my environment in that way. Um, because I love these um, observing aspects, uh, but uh, um, I think it still pains me a little bit that that microscopy is not seen as always as something I don't know. Yeah, it's sometimes only seen through the lens of of, of medicine, um, through the lens of yeah of health, through the lens of oh my gosh, there are bacteria, disgusting bacteria that are gonna get me. Yeah? And I think that's a pity. Well, um, let me hear what you have to say here, and um, yeah, um, so far. Uh, that's all I want uh, to say for today. Happy microbe hunting. Now, just realizing maybe even the word microbe hunter is not even even the, the a good term. Maybe maybe uh, maybe I'm also a little bit at fault. I don't know. <laughs> Never thought about that. Well, happy microbe hunting as always, and uh, see you around next time. Bye bye.